In this video, I'm going to share with you how to plan your first winter camping trip. There are a lot of considerations you have to look at when you're thinking about all the things that you have to ponder to make sure you have a good time on your winter camping trip, you enjoy yourself, and most importantly, you come home safe with all your fingers and all your toes. The very first thing you have to consider simply is, where are you going to go? Are you living in a winter location, Minnesota, Canada, Norway, um, Alaska, I don't know, northern Japan, all sorts of places around the world. Uh, you can even do winter camping in Australia. Thank you very much to my Australian subscribers and viewers. But it's quite surprising the number of places you can go around the world. Now, if you're in the desert or somewhere, no, of course that's not going to work. But perhaps you're in southern New Mex and you got to go to northern New Mex. Sweet. So the very first thing, priority one, is figure out where you need to go. The next thing is to be adaptable with your weather conditions. Because this is your first camping trip into the winter, you really want to think about managing and scheduling for the weather. Because if the weather gets too extreme and you're not prepared for it, you're going to have a very miserable time and you're actually going to endanger yourselves and any of the, or yourself and any of your travel companions that go with you. So you think, oh yeah, we've planned this and everything, but a major storm is rolling in. Don't do it. Just say, hey, we're not ready for this. We're going to back off. And that's perfectly okay because I don't want you to go out and get hurt. So you have to be prepared for weather conditions to adapt. If you're like me, and like, oh, it's storming. I don't have the right gear. I'll just dig a snow tunnel. It might take me three hours to dig a snow tunnel where I can place myself in there and sleep like a coffin. It's actually a very calming experience. That's something you're not probably prepared for on your first camping trip, be, be prepared for that. The next thing is if you want to cook, you need to know that a lot of canister stoves do not work well at high altitude and in cold temperatures. They just simply fail to ignite. If you have a stove like the MSR XGK or something like that, it's super nice. This thing works great at minus 60 degrees, 10,000, 20,000 feet. Super, super nice. Now, of course, when you've got white gas in the container, it might not ignite at that sort of temperature. Of course, minus 60 is super extreme, but let's just say zero degrees. Even at zero degrees, the fuel, the vapors off the fuel might not be warm enough. So you're going to have to put this very freezing bottle into your jacket and warm this thing up. It's not particularly comfortable, but once you warm the fuel up a little bit, and you hook this thing to your stove, you can light your stove very easily. That brings me to the next point. Are you thinking of having a campfire or some sort of other enjoyment, the classic camping experience? Just remember that when everything's covered in snow and it's zero degrees or below freezing at zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees Celsius, and it's super cold, you might have an extremely difficult time warming up the wood to the point where it generates the gas to light it, meaning you're not going to be able to light your campfire. Now, is it nice to have a campfire? Oh, ho, ho. yes, it's very nice to have a campfire if you have the opportunity. However, one of the challenges is in the Northern Hemisphere during our, well, actually Southern Hemisphere winter is the same problem, but it gets dark early. Like right now where I am, 4.30, it's pitch black. Like, you can't tell here, but it's pitch black outside. What do you need to do to consider, hey, I gotta start a fire? Make sure you bring a headlamp, a spare headlamp, and lithium batteries. Those alkaline batteries are gonna poop out. Presumably, you're going to bring your phone with you. Yeah, exactly, undo typing, oh, nice, Z, Z, Z. So consider that your phone is probably going to die if you don't have a way to charge it. Do you bring spare batteries? Do you bring a spare charger and everything? That's a big consideration. The next thing to think about is your sleeping bag and then your shelter. Do you have a very simple three season bag like my Western mountaineering Megalite here that is rated to about 25 or 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or about negative two degrees Celsius, negative five degrees Celsius. This bad boy is not going to cut it in the winter. You definitely don't want to go down that road. Don't freeze your tootsies off. 
So you're going to need a warmer bag than your summer bag. Even though this looks very nice, it's zero degrees, it's super cold. I made the mistake of taking this to five to zero degrees or about minus 18 degrees Celsius. Oh boy, I survived. I didn't lose any toes or fingers, but it was not enjoyable. Also, chances are you're going to want to have a double wall tent. Not a tent like this where it's got mesh, and just a rain fly over it, but you really want in ideal circumstances is a double wall tent. What is a double wall tent? Sounds all technical and everything. No, in fact, all it is is a tent that's completely a nylon shell that you can't, whoa, you cannot see through. That is a critical aspect of this because that nylon shell becomes your first warmth layer also to prevent wind and swirling things from freezing your booty off. But also, once you put the rain fly over it, that double insulation layer is like the insulation layer in your wall. It makes a huge difference to how comfortable you are when you're sleeping in the tent. Do note that you're going to have to unzip the top of that door and a little bit of the rain fly to let airflow come through to eliminate the condensation, the transpiration from your body and your breath that will moisten your tent and completely soak your sleeping bag. So that's a consideration. Also note that chances are that your summer sleeping pad ain't gonna cut it, just not gonna cut it. So you need to consider, hey, I'm going to sleeping, be sleeping on super hard, cold ground, probably snow, maybe five feet or two and a half meters thick. What are you gonna do about that? Chances are you're going to need to use two air mat, like an air mattress and a foam pad or something like that, because otherwise you're going to freeze and know that you're going to have to plan for extra cold sucking through you and your sleeping bag. And of course, you need a lot of winter clothes. The layering system is the best way to go. You start with a thin synthetic or wool shirt, maybe a heavier over shirt, a fleece jacket, and then a puffy coat or another fleece on top of that. I used my liner, liner shirt, a fleece jacket, two fleece jackets, and then my parka in Antarctica. I used roughly the same system in Greenland in the Arctic. So it totally does work. But if you're planning to be hanging out in camp, you're probably going to need a puffy coat. What does puffy coat mean? That means some sort of down coat. It makes a huge difference in your experience. So that just gives you an idea of a few of the things that you need to plan for. But we forgot a critical thing, water and food. Water is going to be a big deal. Wherever you're going to go winter camping, <sighs> be prepared to have no water. So, so many people say, oh yeah, I know this river, it doesn't freeze over the uh, winter, no big deal, you get there, and there's like, six inches of ice on that thing, and you cannot see open water anywhere, what are you gonna do? You're in trouble. You need to bring enough fuel to melt snow to get you through the day. So just for a, a, a comparison, I can use one of these little, uh, what was it, uh, the 300 milliliter bottles from MSR, and I can use my MSR XGK stove combined with my MSR, it's a lot of MSR stuff, titanium stove and the glorious heat exchanger. My expedition partner and I can use this one bottle to make enough water for dinner, drinks, morning drinks, morning cereal, and enough water to take us through the day. So that's a real good planning thing. But also make sure that the food you're bringing can be edible at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus you know, 30 degrees Celsius because when you bring that glorious Pro Bar or Laura Bar or Cliff Bar or whatever you're eating and you go, oh man, you're not gonna be able to chomp through that thing. That is a big, big consideration. Take the food that you have, whatever you think you're going to be eating on your winter camping trip throw it in the freezer for three days and then simulate, hey, I'm on a break, I need to sit down, I need to eat whatever I want to eat. Get that piece of food out of the freezer 
and immediately try and consume it. Are you going to be able to eat it? You might be in for a rude surprise. People totally fail to plan for frozen food, like hard frozen food when you're doing winter camping. That'll get you. Also remember, plan for toilet activities in sub-freezing temperatures. Bring your toilet paper, that's fine. Hand sanitizer generally won't freeze, but those little wet wipes to wipe your bing bing, <laughs> those will freeze solid. Did you plan for wet wipes? Yeah. Remember, you can't hop in the shower like you can at home to make sure everything's all spit spot. So bring those little wet wipes, put it in your armpit or your pants or something to warm them up before you need to do the duty in the morning. And make sure to take care and plan for chili toothpaste, frozen water, and all sorts of other glorious things that you'll need to plan for your first winter camping trip. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. I literally do this for a living, so check it out. I've got a couple books, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold. They'll help you out with this sort of information. Please check out in the description links to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my shows in the description, World Beyond and Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your winter camping.